Warning, this episode of Belief in Fatherhood discusses death. We want to be sensitive to our viewers and make sure that if you haven't talked to your family about this specific topic, that you do so before watching. And if you are a child and have not discussed this with your parent or guardian, we highly recommend you do so before watching this video. Thank you guys so much. Welcome back to Belief in Fatherhood. This video is to check in with you guys on the grieving process that I'm going through. Um, I just want to kind of share with you a timeline to show you how much life can get in the way of you working through whatever it is that you're working through. And so it's almost like you got to force yourself to deal with the things that you're avoiding. Um, on our way back from the RV trip, my dad calls and he's like, yo, when you get home, come see your sister. I guess my sister had mentioned to dad and that, you know, like Glenn isn't coming around. You know what I'm saying? I get back um, on Friday and I go see her on Saturday. And uh, we hung out, we kicked it. I purposely do not film a lot of family members, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, like, like, you know, extended family members, um, because it's like sometimes people don't want to be on camera and it's asking for permission and it's just kind of awkward. You know, some people think, you know, you have like different motives and all types of stuff. So um, I try not to do that often. And, and the road trip is one of those things I, I shared a lot of family. Um, but my sister particularly, like, I know that for a while she had mentioned, like, yo, I don't really want to watch Belief from Fatherhood when you're my brother. I would just want to talk to you and see what's going on that way. And so, <laughs> um, I just was very sensitive about that. So I don't film a lot when I'm around my sister, you know. Um, so I get back, I hang out with her. We took one picture. This was the picture of she's been asking for because she knew she was going to have chemo. She knew she was going to lose her hair. And since me and my dad were bald, she was like, yo, we need to take this photo. You know what I'm saying? All the three of us bald. It's going to be dope. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, when I'm over the cancer, like, you know, it'll be cool to have it as like something as a memory. Um, but when I was there, they were telling, she was telling me that the doctors wanted to put her on like, um, that her playlists were low and she she was refused chemotherapy for a couple weeks. And so um, I'm not really sure what all that means, but I just know that she was getting sicker, but they were like, they're still kind of ho hopeful. The whole time, um, I wasn't really aware that Brittany had stage four cancer. I just knew she had cancer. And the doctor was like, not really wanting to say what kind of cancer or like it, that it was stage four, but it was definitely stage four. You know what I'm saying? I just kind of like blocked that out of my mind because I didn't want to believe that. and. I know my sister, I know how much she loves Jesus, I know how much she loved the Lord, I just knew God had a miracle on the other side, you know what I'm saying? So, um, after I saw my sister on the, dang, I want to say it was the, the 1st of August, uh, that week I went back to work because... Um, like I had been gone for a month, you know, so, you know, if you guys don't know much about behind the scenes of Belief in Fatherhood, I have like five employees. We do a lot of work with a lot of brands. We have to keep up on a lot of like little small details and writing and all types of stuff and stuff we're working on behind the scenes. So it's just not a YouTube channel. It's more of a um, like a fatherhood um, equipping like company and force. Right. And so we do a lot of stuff like that behind the scenes. So I was back working for a week. Right. Grinding. Um, and just trying to catch up, uh, having a lot of meetings, talking to a lot of the people about, you know, the employees about like, dang, like I was gone for a month. How are you doing? You know what I'm saying? <sighs> so then on the seventh is Yvette and I's anniversary. So, um, I was home for a week working then, um, you know, and I wasn't really home a lot with the kids. I wasn't home a lot with everybody. I was just kind of trying to get work done real quick. And that was one of the fears that Yvette said that like, when we were in the Zion episode, she was like, you know, I'm scared that, you know, like you're going to go back and you're just going to go back to work. And I was kind of like, OK, but that's kind of what you got to do sometimes, you know. Um, and so we weren't really in that much of an agreement there, but we were cool. And so um, we we celebrated our anniversary um, at Del Frisco's. Yvette and I hung out. Uh, we spent the night down there. It was dope. We got back on Sunday and then I went back to work on Monday. And on Tuesday, my dad calls me crying. And I'm like, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? He's like, Brittany's, um, the cancer reached Brittany's liver. They're admit admitting her into the hospital. Hug and kiss your family. And I was like, man, I don't know what that means. You know what I'm saying? So basically, 
what was kind of told to me is that like, you know, um, you know, I think it was like the next day, Wednesday, you know, I'm, mind you, I'm trying to put out videos, <laughs> whatever, like stupid me, right? I'm just kind of like, Brittany's going to be fine. God is going to do a miracle. I reached out to the people like, yo, we need to pray for my sister. Da -da -da -da. Like my sister's going to be fine. This is going to happen. You know what I'm saying? I was like believing like without a doubt in my mind. And so Wednesday, my dad says it's, it's liver failure. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll give her my liver. You know what I'm saying? It's, but like me stupid, right? Like you only got one liver, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like Googling, like how many liver, like how, do you need your liver to, 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 to live? <laughs> it's in the name, liver, you know what I'm saying? Like you need that joint. So I'm like, okay, so my sister needs a liver. They're like, no, she, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like liver failure, like she's on her way out. And so like, I'm like, uh, here we go, like God. And I just start talking to God and I'm like, you know, I can't deal with that. And, and as soon as Brittany got diagnosed with cancer and I went to go see her, you know, her husband called me, you know, I went to go see her that night. And then the next morning, I woke, you know, we cried together. I woke up the next morning, I cried with Yvette and I told her, I was like, I won't be able to survive if this girl dies. Do you know that? And she was like, looking at me like, really? And I was like, no, like, I won't be able to take it. And so just a little bit of history about my sister, right? So I She's like the closest female relationship I have since my since I was a baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, the closest person who's a woman in my life is my sister. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, me and my mom aren't super close. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody is like it's like through a lot of relationships we're connected uh, with other people. But my sister is like my she's like a, a pillar for me. And so I, I told my I told my wife I was like I'm not gonna be able to you know I'm not gonna be able to, okay right. So that morning when I talked to, um, no, when I found out about, you know, having living failure, I just started talking to God and I said, I told you I can't. I told you. Like, I told you I would not be able to survive this. I told you. Like, I told you. And I just kept saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. <sighs> so then... Thursday, like, I, I'm just kind of, like, grieving the fact, like, what's happening and hearing, like, stories through my dad and, like, wanting to reach out to her husband but knowing, like, he's busy and, like, they're admitted in the hospital. She's not getting out of the hospital. I'm like, what's going on? And so I end up going there on, um, they were like, you can't just go there. You have to get a COVID test. You got to get, you know, like, whatever. Um, waiting for my COVID test results so I can go see my sister. Um, if I, and I don't feel like I have any symptoms or anything like that, but I wanna see my sister and I know like, Glenn? Yes. Test results come out negative. Negative, thank you so much. Appreciate it. So now that I have my negative, results for COVID, I can go see my sister who I know it's not, you know what I'm saying? Like, she, it's, it's, I can't even say it, you know what I'm saying? But like, I'm not feeling it. So I, okay, cool. So I go get my COVID test and I go see her on Friday, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I, I was trying not to tell the team and trying not to tell too many people about it because I wasn't really sure and I didn't want to put anything out there without knowing how severe the situation was. And so when I went down there to see my sister on Friday, um, like I remember getting to the hospital and then like going to check in. And um, not even being able to say the room number because I was like, I don't even want to affirm like be here, you know what I'm saying? So when I spoke to the security guard, I'm like, I'm going in the room and I just broke down, you know what I'm saying? And so when I get to see her, it's all like the anticipation was crazy. And so when I get to see her, she's looking all like inflamed and not well. 
so I left um, like after like an hour or so of being there. I went to go get Travis a, a gift because he needed something for his room um, so that he can sleep in the room because they wanted to discharge her for the hospice, right? And so they get her not. And so they want to discharge her that day, but the doctor said that she was going to make it for another month. You know what I'm saying? They were like, we, she could be in this state for one or two months, right? And this is on Friday. One, uh, one to three months. And so Travis was like, her husband was like, yo, I'm looking at her. She doesn't look like she's going to make it a month. Like, just be honest with me because we have family coming in town. We're trying to prep people. Like, what's happening? They were like, she can be in this state for one to three months. So we're like, all right, cool. We're expecting her to make it um, at least a month. So I'm trying to help Travis because he doesn't have a, they can't fit a hospice bed in their bed in the room. So I go get him like a, um, like a lazy boy or something so that can fit in their room so he can sleep next to her at her bedside. I leave the hospital. I go do my thing. I pick up the chair. I'm on the way to the house and I just break down because I'm going to see my father who is losing his daughter. I want to see my stepmom who's losing his daughter. I got to see my nieces and nephews who's losing their mother. And I'm just, God, I told you I can't. I told him, I can't, I can't. So then, I'm like, ugh. So then I, I just, I go, you know what I'm saying? I drop off the lazy boy or whatever. And then I, I go home and I'm just quiet. You know, every Friday night we have family night. We are, uh, you know what I'm saying, doing our thing with the family. And we woke up the next morning at around like 10 o'clock. My dad calls me and was like, you need to come see your sister, right? She's been transported from the hospital to, to, the, to her house in hospice care. And my dad calls and says, you need to come see your sister. It's time. So I'm in this room, break it down again. Because I'm like, God, I told you I can't do this told you that and so we had to sit the kids down and explain to them what was happening and I was worse than I am now you know what I'm saying like crying whatever and mind you this all happened you know this is August 14th so I sit, we sit down, we get all, all the kids are in the bed, we're, we're talking to them about what's happening with Auntie Rat, which is my sister, Brittany Radford. And so, Theo's tracking, and he's like seeing me emotionally distraught, and because Theo's like very high uh, level emotionally, he's listening and he's like sad, right? He's sad for, for me, he's sad for Yvette, he's sad for all of us, you know what I'm saying? Uriah's kind of like, man, this makes me uncomfortable, can we stop talking about this? This makes me nervous. Am I going to die too? You know what I'm saying? And I was like, dude, what's the big deal? You know what I'm saying? She doesn't understand death, right? So, she's like, you're crying. Why are you crying? I'm like, dad, stop crying. You know what I'm saying? Uzi, you know, is oblivious. But everyone can see that something is happening. So then, we talk about like, hey, you know, Auntie Rad's, uh, she's going to go be with Jesus. She's Her body's dying, but her spirit's going to live on. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, where does her body go? And so they were like, you know, I said, you know, th they bury people. You know what I'm saying? Usually, or Yvette said it, like, you know, they bury people, you know, when, when they die. You know what I mean? Their bodies go on the ground. And then so Theo goes like Flash, which was good because I realized that we had already experienced something like this that was kind of like, you know, we kind of made it cute and funny, but it was a real thing. We wanted Theo to have reverence for his fish dying. I don't know if you guys remember that episode, but Theo's fish died. We had a little funeral for him and we told Theo about death. We told him that, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is an important moment, you know what I mean? But we're going to have reverence for this moment. So Theo was able to, like, pinpoint and, like, reference that. And I felt very proud of that, you know what I'm saying? And so we had to, like, get ready to go and drive to my sister's house to see her off. So we get to the house, we're driving there, and my dad like pocket dials me by mistake, FaceTime. And so basically I'm in his like pocket, 
hearing everything that's going on in the room, but I can't see anything because I'm in his pocket. So all I hear is people singing worship music. And I'm just start crying because I'm like, oh, she gone. You know what I'm saying? And I just start weeping in the car the entire way, 30 minutes to her house. I get to, we get to the house. I get outside the door. And I can't go inside. Like, I do not want to go in there. You know what I'm saying? I told. Uh, I was like, I don't want to go in there, man. Like, it's already hard to it like to to see what I saw at the hospital, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want to see her that way, you know what I'm saying? And so like I'm trying to like I can't go in there. So Yvette goes in there before me, gets my dad, tells her to tells him to come out to talk to me, you know what I'm saying? And then she goes in and just kinda of see the what's happening inside of there. And she was like, It's fine. Just come in, just come in. And then we walked in there and everybody's in the room. Like a bunch of family members and friends. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's in there. So, we're all in there. And I just get on my knees and hold her hand. Okay, so. Get on my knees, hold her hand. We're sitting there. Some people are praying, some people are talking, some people are telling stories, singing. Her kids are in there. I told my kids they didn't have to come in. They wanted to come in. They sat next to me. Oh, God. You know what I'm saying? So they sat next to me. Mind you, my grandmother, all my cousins, my aunts, all are on the way from Baltimore. They're all staying with me, but they don't know that she's about to pass away. We talked to the hospice nurse. They were like, yeah, maybe an hour, <laughs> maybe an hour. So they're hitting her with pain meds. You know what I'm saying? We got over there like 1130. 12.30, she was gone. Like I said, before I was holding her hand, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to leave so bad because, like, I was like, I can't do this. I'm like, man, I'm her brother. Like, who else is going to be here? I mean, everybody was there, but, like, if anybody should be there, it should be me. You know what I'm saying? So, it feels like torture. Everybody is just weeping. It's, it's, so, right, so before she passes, you know, like you have two deaths, right? So there's a initial, like, there's initial, like, the oxygen stops, your lungs stop working. Then the oxygen, like, leaves your brain. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like two deaths. So, you like it's almost like you died twice. So, as I'm holding her hand, she opens up her eyes real big. And then she just kind of sighs out. Close her eyes. That's the first death. And at that point, I mean, I'm holding her hand. I'm done. You know what I'm saying? I step out of the room. And then... Everybody's dealing with it in their own way. And then I go back in. And then she's having like this this second death, right? Where like you can feel as you touch her like the blood is not flowing. So her hands were really soft, but now they're like they're starting to like get hard. And um Yeah, they get hard, and then uh, she smiles, like, on her way out. Like, she was, like, laying, and then, like, her last, her last facial expression was, like, this smile, you know? <sighs> Which was kind of creepy, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to lie, you know what I mean? Um, but it is very much in her character to... Uh, 
smile. And there was there were a couple more things that happened that I just want to kind of address, right? She smiles. I go outside afterwards. And then like this this rain comes. And it's like not enough to get you drenched, but just enough to cool you off. And it's like this real like it's like it's like it's just a little bit of rain that just is like comforting. Um on this like super hot strange day and uh you know after we left we look outside and the sun is setting and it's the most brilliant sunset I've ever seen in my life and you could see it no matter where you were at the colors were so loud and vibrant and it's a couple things were taken away from that. My father was saying how Brittany's smile, he's choosing to believe that, you know, that's when she saw the father, you know what I mean? Uh, when she smiled, you know. Her, her spirit, you know, ascending to heaven. <laughs> Man, I felt like that had to do with the rain. I'm not sure. But I'm literally searching for anything to give me comfort at this point. And so, after that, we, like, I'm so glad to have, like, my family came through that night. My grandmother, my cousin, and then, uh, like, nine other cousins and aunts and, and stuff, you know what I'm saying, came to my house and they all stay here. So we ended up hosting family members, which they were like, just put us in a hotel, but I really wanted them around because they are like lifelines and fun and funny and all that. And so they were all here until like Wednesday. Well, they were all here until Wednesday, but we, we spent so much time together just laughing and enjoying each other, still realizing that someone was missing, you know? And so, I don't know if it was Monday or Sunday. Uh, no, it had to be had to be Monday or Tuesday. Uh, I had my homie Phil come over and take photos just because the family's never together, um, and just take some photos, just like candid, like not to be intrusive or like pose. But we ended up posing for some because you know. But the entire family was together. And, um, you know, just missing my sister. And so we got to spend a lot of time bonding and loving on each other. And that was valuable because I don't think I would have been able to make it. But I, but I do think I, it was a distraction, a good distraction. But I also don't feel like I took enough time to sit with it. And maybe I did. I'm not sure. And so this is the first time I'm having to grieve, right? In this way, because like right after my family left, I went back to work and started like, all right, all right, so we got to do this. And then I would stop and just pause and be like, okay. And then we had to plan the funeral, right? Another memorial service. And so I made a video for my sister for the memorial service and, you know, we were getting everything ready. And then so like, you know, we, we did the memorial service and then we did like the burial and then like a, like a after party function that night. And it just was like, and that was a whole month, you know what I'm saying? Cause we didn't bury until like, I think September 12th or something. Uh, I think it was then, but yeah, like it was a lot of time spent dealing with that and everybody's going through stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to make it seem like my, like it, it can't be worse or anything like that, but it's my first time really having to deal with something like this, this heavy. And my therapist was telling me a couple things. Uh, you know, that grief is like a wave. Um, it's like a bunch of waves, actually. And so whenever that wave comes, you got to learn how to ride it out. And I'm used to being like, I'm going to swim to the side. I'm going to go underneath. I'm going to get through the wave and go further out because I still have work to do, you know what I'm saying? But learning how to ride that wave is gonna be essential and important 
for my survival. And so I've been like putting off a bunch of stuff that I needed to do emotionally for a long time. And it's all kind of coming up now while I'm dealing with this other stuff. So I'm definitely in a very strange place that I really wouldn't it, um, advise other people to get in. But um, also, I know that um, I was I saw this other diagram where it was like grief is like a, it's like if your if your mentality or your 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 life is like a jar, grief is like a huge ball inside of that jar, and over time, you know, the jar gets bigger because there's more space in between you and the event, meaning time. Um, there's more. Um, you know, there's acceptance, you know what I'm saying? And that creates space. Uh, there's forgiveness, forgiving yourself and letting go of guilt and shame. Like that creates space. And so the further you get away, the more you grow through it and with it, you actually grow and with, and that creates more space uh, for you to deal with the grief, but it will never leave you. Always be there. I have like a new resident inside of my heart in grief, you know, um, I'm really sensitive to it, I'm incredibly embarrassed by my lack of care for myself because now I'm just kind of like, what do I do, um, yeah, so I'm really struggling, man, and I want to say that now because, you know, I feel like we just ended this season with you know, oh my gosh, you guys went on a road trip and all this stuff, and it was amazing, so much fun. It's, uh, but like the whole time I was going on a road trip, I was going because, you know, my grandfather passed away two years ago, and he didn't get to see his grandkids. I'm like, yo, let's make sure all the grandkids see their see our grandparents, you know, their great grandparents, so that we don't miss any more people, right? I talked about this at White Sands. And then we go see all these people, we come back, my sister passed away, and then my wife's, Yvette's grandfather passed away, who we actually did see, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, dang, man, like, God is doing something, like, he's working, he's, he's like, nothing is done in, like, without purpose, or in, like, everything has intention, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I'm not, I'm not wrong, I didn't do anything wrong. You know what I mean? Like, like how I'm feeling is okay. And I have to, like, you, like you gotta be okay with being sad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, being sad isn't something that we are supposed to avoid. You know what I'm saying? Like, being, being angry isn't something that we're supposed to avoid. It's just, what do you do with that anger? I was talking to my homie this weekend, and he was saying that's like, None of these emotions are bad, right? It's just like, what are, you, what are you doing with those emotions? And so when I'm sad, it's like, okay, like, I'm not, it's not that I don't cry or I'm, I tell my kids not to cry or anything like that, but I don't, I don't pursue a tear. Like, if I feel that joint coming, I throw my head back, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, ah, hold on, hold on. You good? You know what I'm saying? But it's like, nah, man. <laughs> I pull a Uzi, slap myself like, hey, hey, you good? Uh, because I'm like, I don't really have time for this. But like, I, I need to make time for these tears. Like, I need to make time for these feelings. Because if I don't, they're going to come up <laughs> randomly. You know what I'm saying? Without notice, without explanation. Um, and that's okay too. But I've been definitely inspired to care for myself more but it's like you got to make the time to do that you know success will make it seem like i'm okay no i'm just being productive you know what i'm saying like i'm not okay and I think it's okay to still be productive, but still be sad and still not be okay. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so I, I, I took some risks lately and um, 
a while back, I was like, yo, I need a mentor. I need a mentor. I need a mentor. Um, and some of you guys, some of you guys heard me, um, but I, I definitely am pursuing a, um, you know, a mentor, a mentor at the moment, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, I found the guy that I'm like the dream person. I was like, yo, this is who I want. You know what I'm saying? And it was a risk and I'm like, Hey, yo, do you do, you know, one-on-ones? And they were like, no, I don't. And so I was like, well, that's what I need. And they're like, well, you can go to my program. I was like, I don't want your program. I want one-on-one. And so I had to basically, <laughs> you know, talk to this individual just to get a, a moment of his time. And, and the fact that I even got his phone number is enough for me. But, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pursuing things for my, my own individuality. Uh, because though I have this passion towards fatherhood and I have these amazing kids and this amazing wife and this great family and this calling and this team and live in California and this house that I love and all these things it's kind of like none of this is sustainable without knowing how to think and accountability you know what I'm saying like or faith you know what I'm saying like in what God has given you to do like none of it is sustainable and so I'm not trying to fall off because I'm not thinking right, or I don't know how to think, or I don't have any accountability. Anyway, I am pursuing a mentor. I'm in therapy. I am crying. And though it may seem like I need to be doing more, that is exactly what I'm gonna be doing. I'm still gonna be working, making these videos or whatever, but I'm gonna be crying. <laughs> I'm gonna be going to therapy. I'm gonna be pursuing a mentor. And though that's like that's my to-do list. Um, because I can't I can't I can't move on like this and just keep pushing and stuffing this down deep. Like I need some real healing, you know what I mean? So thank you. And keep me in prayer. Stop. Get intro, citizens rise, this ain't for the ignorant mind Look at his eyes, full of pain, a victim inside But shedding a tear, feeling your fears, isn't that vibe? Yet the suicide rate among men is still a surprise If you cry because you said you ain't no You a if you let it eat you up to the point they get lethal And cause you let it build up, you done took it out on your people Especially ones that treat you with love Look, it's okay to be vulnerable, cause you owe it to you I know you don't know what to do but you know that's the truth I know you can't focus And that you coping by smoking your blues I know you posting pics on your socials And hope they a fool Trust me, them demons you fighting We know they hoping you lose You gotta open right through these things Called feelings And go through your moves To be a real man You don't need no one to prove Who told it to you Cause boy